Very well pronounced, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for having me here. I'm Jeremias Grenzebach, this is the German version. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm talking about, about community-based companies today, mainly, but also on how to use the blockchain to, to do something like that. Um, but first, uh, before, before I start, I'd like to ask you, how many of you um, know what Bitcoin is, actually? Heard about it? Hands up. Okay, almost everybody. Nice, okay. <laughs> Last question, um, how many of you have Bitcoin, like own Bitcoin? Okay, yeah, also a few. Okay, interesting. So I know a bit uh, on which stand we are at the moment. Okay, and for those of you who doesn't look very excited at the moment, the coffee break is right after the, uh, the talk. <laughs> okay, um, let's get started with the topic, actually. So, yeah. Um, now, my, my talk is in three sections. What is a, a community-based company? Um, why should we have something like that? And how can you actually do something like that, like a community-based business? And let's get started with the first question. So this is actually related to the startup that um, me and a, a couple of other guys founded in the beginning of this year. And as many startups, we had the problem, first, how can we get money, actually? How can we, um, how can we, oh, sorry, that wasn't my purpose. Oh, one sec. Okay, here we are. So how can we raise funds? And secondly, um, how can we get awareness? How can we make people know us, like marketing-wise, right? And as a, as a startup, in the beginning, you have the problem, you have no money and nobody knows you. So we, we thought about that whole concept that exists, actually, like you, you spend money on advertisements, like poster ads, for example, radio spots and stuff, and if you spend a lot of money, then you will get a lot of awareness, right? Um, a next level, second level of such marketing would be that um, you, really, you really have a, such a good product already, or do the marketing such in, a good, in a, such a good way, that people somehow talk to each other about it, right? So they, they self-promote your, your product, which is, of course, very nice, but very hard to achieve and you need a lot of money again. So the, um, at this time, this was about March uh, this year, I, um, I, had, uh, I heard a speech of Dirk Alborn. This is the CEO of Hyperloop HTT. They're building these Hyperloop tunnels, these very fast transportation thing. And, uh, and one interesting thing that excited me a, a lot actually was that he was talking about um, building a, a business, a company that actually reaches out to the community engages the community and make the community somehow be part of the company. So uh, just imagine you would work for any random company and do the advertisement for them, do uh, develop products for them, um, spreading the word and so on and so on. So we, we thought, for, at least for marketing, that could be a very interesting thing for us because we could, um, we, then in this case we had people all, all around the globe that would somehow feel being part of DentaCoin and promote our project and it wouldn't cost us much. So we started to build up a, a, a community like this and uh, later in the talk I, I show you how we did that actually. But uh, somehow that thing is not really doing what I would like to do it. So okay, but let's get back there. Um, yeah, so we have this, this problem with startups raising money and um, yeah, that's mainly what the, what the situation was. So next is um, further reasons for why such a community-based company is interesting. So if you do it properly, you, you spread your idea around the globe, right? It's, or at least at these countries where you're acting in. In our case, it's mainly around the globe where we are trying to um, better dentistry and the dental health care by getting patients and dentists together and improving the, the healthcare system with several apps and, and websites that we develop. So, um, but it can also help you to fund the project. This is a bit like crowdfunding then, right? You try to, to find people that really enthusiasts in your project and give you money for the project. In our case, it's not even giving the money away for free. Mm -hmm. They even get something in return. They get a cryptocurrency in return. We'll talk about that um, very soon. But um, then we have uh, this very interesting aspect that you could actually uh, engage people to work for you. 
there can be many uh, different ways of, uh, of this engagement. For example, um, people could write articles for you about the project. People like uh, pro, uh, dev developers, for example, could try to hack your app or your website or your currency, and you could pay them bounties if they finally reach that or not, hopefully. Um, you could uh, have people developing your website, for example, for you. Um, or any any other kind of work that is somehow uh, doable. Of course, there are some. Uh, it's important to in get people included. They need to understand what they are working on at the moment. So we'll see that transparency is a very important key for that. But there's also other things like if you if you manage to build up a community and if this community is growing, then it's somehow self-contained to a certain extent. That means that several um, b um, efforts are done on their own responsibility in different countries or in different areas. So you don't need to handle everything. There's not this central point of control, but there is this central point still, of course, but then there is a decentralized net of workers, of co-workers, that act partly responsible on their own. Right? So you can share the risk, the responsibility, but also the, the success there. Yep, and then um, a very important step, this is a point which is also, which Dirk Albon also talked about, is that if you do a thing like that, you will get a lot of feedback. Right? If you open up your company and let others uh, coming in and working for you and with you, that means they will feedback you and they, they bring ideas. Ideas that you as a startup, for example, could never achieve. So um, it's really interesting to get as much people as, as possible involved, as many people as possible, to help you getting your product improved and getting it in the, in the right direction because you really learn what your customers that are partly also your co-workers really want, right? What they like about your idea and what they think it's, it's realistic about your idea and stuff. So this is a, this is also a very important point for it. Yeah, and then and decentralization is by the um, is like very important for the stability of of such a project uh, project and the uh, efficiency. So this is a bit like solar panels, right? They are much more stable as they are decentralized than, for example, a um, centralized power plant that could be attacked, and then the whole energy uh, level drop in the whole country. But if you have a decentralized thing like this, or a decentralized company in our case, it would be way more stable, and there's no single point of failure then left. So this is uh, um, maybe interesting for you, but you might wonder how can you what is now how how would you start with such a project? How would you come up with something like this? And um, yeah, that's the main part now. And it all started with the idea to create a blockchain currency. So what is a blockchain currency? This is mainly something like Bitcoin, right? And um, what we learned from the Hyperloop project and other projects that are doing community-based um, businesses, they most often give away their shares for the efforts that they get, right? So because there are people that are really just enthusiasts and they like to even to work for free. It also happened to us, like programmers that came and said, oh, that part of our website, of your website is not very nice, so maybe I could improve it. And then we said, yeah, just go for it. And this guy didn't want anything for it, he just did it because he liked the project and the idea, right? But most people, they, they want to get uh, some reward for their, for their work. So we could give away shares, like Hyperloop that um, HTT does. But then we thought about that whole ICO stuff going on at the moment, initial coin offerings. This is like companies creating their own currency. This currency is somehow on the blockchain, which uh, gives it a very nice properties as it's very secure, um, very fast. It's not reliant on a country or on a, govern a government. It's pretty cheap, at least in future, to make transactions with it. And you don't need to care about security there. You just create it somehow. It's 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 a global thing, so everyone can use it from then on. Like there are four billion people that have smartphones. This is more than people that have access to drinking water. So they, they can actually all send that money and receive that money, right? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, actually a very, 
a very stable and a very efficient way of doing um, business then with this kind of currency. So we, uh, we created such a currency, but why? Because we thought, okay, if our network is, is increasing, if our company is gaining value, then this, our currency, this Denta coin, this, this uh, global currency, also might rise in value. Right? This is the experience that all the other projects have. So it, it somehow acts a bit like a share, a, com a regular company share. But it has also other aspects like being a currency that, ca that can really be used with our tools to, um, to earn and spend it at the doctor or on these websites that we make or in, in this app that we do. And it can ultimately be changed, exchanged on platforms, we are listed on several platforms, to real world currency. So it's a, it, there is an actual value of that. And, but the, the interesting part is we created it out of nothing, right? And so we can distribute it. We distribute it to our co-workers, we distribute it to, to people that somehow interact with us and do something for it. We call that distribution of value. So we get the money, we don't give it away for free, but we get it out um, when we get um, any effort done for in, uh, in reward for it. Right? So this is the idea of uh, creating that currency. That's not the only thing um, you need to do, or we, we, we uh, experience that we need to do. Very important part actually is to open up your business, which means you need to be transparent. You can't do your stuff, uh, de uh, design your product and everything and plan about marketing and then just inform people. That's not working any longer. You really need to get them in. Right? You need to, um, what we did is we worked with, with Slack or any other of these messengers uh, internally and then we realized at some point that if we'd like to get people in, included then we, we, we can't only share our tasks and ideas and everything internal but we, we made it public. Really uh, took the risk and made all this information public or the vast majority of that of the information at least. And people re re reacted really um, positively to that. So that what, what happened is that they really started to, to engage. And they, they, they you, most people I think, including me, actually like to be part of a, of, a, of a community or of a movement. That's what we see it now. And so if you, if you show what you're doing and if you ask questions, the, uh, maybe the most important aspect, you, you ask for feedback, then people will come and help you, and uh, it, it, it's not your thing any longer, it's more our thing then, right? Okay, so, yeah, important part about that, of course, is also that you somehow need to promote your idea to, to include people, but that, that's mainly your product needs some fundamentals, right? I'm not talking about our product now. Um, this is, shouldn't be ad advertisement. There are other talks if you're interested or you get uh, curious about it, about DentaCoin, there, there are certain other talks. But um, this is about more about the general idea of such movements. But if you come up with an idea or a product that people are excited about it and you present it in an open and honest way with all these strengths and weaknesses, <laughs> then you get the best result, I think. Okay. Yeah, then what's left is that you actually, um, we actually plan to increase that even more. Like we got a few thousand interested people and a few people that are really working for us at the moment. But we, we thought about what could be next steps to really improve such a, such a community. Right? It's, it's, not a, it's not an easy task because it's quite uncommon. There are companies out there, like uh, I mentioned this Hyperloop, HET, but there are also others. But it's not the, the usual thing to do. We are actually aware of that. So we, we try to, to figure out what do we need to do to, even, to engage people even more. So now we're paying them so they don't need to work for free, which is somehow very important and essential. But what can we do else? So we thought, Maybe people can also do this, make decisions in that kind, in, in our business, and there the, the blockchain uh, again becomes really interesting if you're using Ethereum, like the Ethereum blockchain that we do, um, you can set up these so-called smart contracts that are like rules in the block software in the blockchain that follow strict rules. 
you don't need to trust it. And that leads me to the create a voting platform that I'm not responsible of. So the, the votings that are done there, for example, votings for decisions in the company, are 100% secure. I cannot influence the voting, so people don't need to trust me that the, the voting results are actually true. And um, everyone can use it. Right? It's not, no one can stop such a platform because it's, it's on the blockchain, which basically means it's like Bitcoin, an international phenomenon, and nobody can, can change that. So, yeah, um, that, that's one of the next steps we're setting. Where we're going to set up such a, such a voting platform so that people, unto, uh, to a certain extent, of course, can really take part in the decision making of that company. And that's connected to their shares, to their Denta coin. Because if you have more of them, then similar to an actual share, you have more voting rights. Like one Denta coin is one voting right. So um, it's still not a share, right? It's still a currency. You can buy stuff with it. You can just save it for later. Actually, it's a very a good idea to save it because it, it doesn't have an inflation. Yeah, there's a fixed amount and it will be never more. It's a bit similar to gold, actually. Like, also Bitcoin is similar to gold. And, but you can also use it for voting, if you have it. So you can, you can really be part of that community. And then we're not talking longer about a company. It, of course, it's, by law, it's a company, but it's more like a movement. People are really getting into that all over the world. And they really are able to make decisions there. And decide where this whole thing should go to. Um, by the way, the, 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 um, as I mentioned before, the, the actual idea is to improve, improve dentistry, right? It's about getting dentists and patients together and, and align their interests uh, by, by these tools that we provide. I know this is a bit abstract, but you, if you're interested, just head to dentacon.com and you can read or learn more about that. Or just join our Slack channel because there you can actually um, be part of the whole thing and all of these other companies too that are trying to do something similar at the moment. Yep, and then at a very, uh, if, you, if you go even one step further, these communities that are per definition globally or internationally because the blockchain doesn't have borders like other currencies, um, these communities can somehow self-contain, as I mentioned before. So what, what happens is that you can really, it's actually happening at the moment a bit, like we we're starting with this. In India, we have a small community that try to, uh, tries to adapt these ideas and, and, and products that we have to their local situation. Right? This is a really decentralized thing because as a centralized company, it's very hard to predict what is interesting for, uh, interesting for that market and what is relevant here and then you need to control everything. But if, you, if, you even, uh, if your community is growing naturally somehow, it forms, eventually forms sub-communities that are loosely bound to the, to the so-called headquarter but can, um, can find their own solutions to problems. And, um, and get their own power somehow. Yeah, that's uh, mainly about communities. So once again, if you if you like, just uh, check our uh, ch check our Slack and um, see it uh, in real action. Um, it's it's actually growing every day, and it's it's very exciting for us. Um, I hope that such kind of companies will form up in future way more that such kind of communities are actually growing because I th I see that uh, this is a really interesting thing in, in the future, such kind of community-based companies. Thank you very much.